It's a pleasure to join you. My name is Dr. Martin B. Leon. I'm a professor of cardiology at Columbia University um, uh, and the Cardiovascular Research Foundation in New York City. And I've been a structural interventionalist and a clinical trialist for most of my career. TAVR has been re remarkably successful with almost 100,000 procedures being performed in the U.S. this year alone, but there are still some unmet needs. One of the important unmet needs is that we are um, continuing to treat lower and lower risk patients that tend to be younger in age. And in the lower risk, younger age patients, we expect that their lifespans are longer. So valve durability, which means long-term outcomes, becomes an important consideration. Um, uh, that is a major unmet need. Another unmet need is the treatment of bicuspid aortic valve disease, which also occurs more frequently in younger patients. And a third is the management of redo TAVR in those patients with bioprosthetic valve failure. Well, the Sapien 3 valve has been available for quite some time. It's gone through some minor iterations. Uh, the one used in this study was the original Sapien 3 valve. So it's been used for more than seven years now. Um, and this is a balloon expandable valve with a cobalt alloy, um, alloy frame with uh, a bovine pericardial tissue, uh, a tri-leaflet valve uh, that is intra-annular, relatively short frame, balloon expandable, and compatible in four sizes with a 14 French expandable sheath delivery system. Uh, it also has an external coating, which uh, significantly reduces paravalvular regurgitation. The PARTNER 3 trial was really the continuation of the fourth series of PARTNER trials, starting from extreme risk to high risk to intermediate risk, and now to low risk patients. The original one-year primary endpoint was reported in 2019, and we're now reporting the five-year pre-specified endpoint, recognizing that this study will continue until at least 10 years. The study population were 1,000 low-risk, severe symptomatic aortic stenosis patients with a mean age of between 73 and 74, uh, with an STS score of 1.9, much less in the way of severe symptoms. Only 25 to 30% were functional class three or four, much less in the way of comorbidities. It was equally um, um, divided and randomized one to one between um, surgical treatment with bioprosthetic valves and transfemoral sapien three treatment with TAVR. Well, the main findings were, again, I want to emphasize the follow-up findings because the importance of this was the follow-up um, over the course of five years. Uh, and this was recently published, a uh, coincident with the presentation um, uh, uh, two weeks ago uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine. So the full manuscript and the supplement are in the New England Journal of Medicine. It is the eighth New England Journal of Medicine publication from the Partner Series. The main findings were the primary endpoint, which was a triple composite endpoint of all cause death, all strokes, and rehospitalization for cardiovascular reasons um, uh, um, over the course of five years uh, still showed that um, uh, there was a very strong performance of both TAVR and surgery. A delta favoring TAVR, which was 7.1% at one year, and at that point was statistically significant, which narrowed somewhat to a difference of 4.3%, still favoring TAVR, but no longer statistically significant, the p-value being 0.07. So significant results, which indicate that the two technologies are quite similar for this important triple composite endpoint out to five years. I, th I think the other points in this study, which are really meaningful, are that we looked at um, all of the other ma um, um, many endpoints, including the echocardiographic findings. We found that the dramatic improvement in the antegrade hemodynamics was sustained over the course of five years with a um, overall valve area of 1.87 in the TAVR arm and 1.83 in the surgical arm, quite similar. 
we found using a quantitative measure of bioprosthetic valve failure, which is a new VARC-3 definition, that the event rate for valve failure was extremely low, 3.8% in the surgical arm and 3.3% in the TAVR arm, which was less than what we had expected. And that structural valve deterioration, which is a sign of durability, uh, again, using very um, um, rigorous definitions in a core echo lab, was also extremely low and similar. And finally, the quality of life for these patients was dramatically improved. They started with a baseline KCCQ score of 70, which increased by about 15 points and then remained stable for five years and was very similar between surgery and TAVR. So we can tell our patients who are symptomatic, have severe aortic stenosis, and are low risk that at the end of five years, they have more than a 70% chance of being alive and having none or very minor symptoms, and more than an 85% chance of being alive and having a durable, well-functioning valve. And those are very important findings, and we believe show the uh, um, equivalence of um, TAVR and surgery, at least for the five-year period in a study design like ours. I mean, obviously, the, the, the study never ends, and five years is a very good midpoint to assess valve durability, but we need to carry this out to 10 years. So the 10-year study point is very important. So we'll continue following these patients out to 10 years. As I mentioned earlier, the majority of these patients, the mean age was 73, but many patients with aortic stenosis are younger. And uh, we have, have not studied a younger population. So uh, treating younger patients would also be an important um, need for the future. And if we can continue to demonstrate good durability, then I would argue that all of the, the new studies that are being developed that involve preemptive earlier treatment with TAVR, either in severe asymptomatic AS or at-risk moderate AS become extremely important. And those studies are ongoing, some of which will be reported in the next year or two.